All right, so uh, I'm ready to go. Um, you should have your command prompt open at your project. So go ahead and uh, open up node command prompt into your project. And uh, I'd like you to do this, Cordova platform. I need to check something, Cordova platform. Let's run Cordova platform on our project just to confirm something here. So mine says installed platform Android 4.0.0 and browser 3.5.2. Um, you guys tell me, what does your browser say? Same thing? 3.5.2? Okay. So we're actually going to upgrade our browser even though I say, even though I said, don't update your code in the middle of the project, in this case, I know that it's okay to do so because we're updating the browser code, not the main Android code. That could be perhaps more problematic to update. I want to update the browser code, the browser platform, because um, I want to be able to test my project in the web browser, uh, in Google Chrome, to look up the the console and other things. And it seems that um, in this room, it doesn't quite work to do Cordova run browser. It seems that most of us get like a little spinning wheel that never goes away in this room. And that's because we've got browser 3.5.2. We want the new one, browser 4.0. That one is going to apparently fix whatever issue was happening that didn't allow us to run the browser. And so if you've got a real or virtual device, I think it's still useful to use the browser device because it'll allow us to quickly troubleshoot our our code instead of waiting and waiting and waiting for it to load on the devices. So I think there's an official way to upgrade the software in in Cordova, but we'll do it this way instead. We'll we'll type here on, inside of our project Cordova remove browser. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's Cordova Platform Remove. Cordova Platform Remove Browser. Here we go. We're running Cordova about platforms. We're going to remove a platform browser. Press Enter. When that's done, it's going to remove the code base for the browser platform. And then we will do Cordova Platform Add Browser. It's done. Now we'll do Cordova Platform Add Browser. Oh, actually, I'm going to cancel that. I noticed in my code it's trying to retrieve browser 360. I want browser 4. So I canceled it. If, if it went through, you'll have to do Cordova I should have checked it, sorry. Cordova platform remove again. Browser. Wait, it doesn't say what version it's getting from my, from my, from my, from my, from my extension. No, it does right here. Cordova browser 360. Well, uh, yeah, it does for you, but I mean, for me, it's just because I'm saying it. Can you see that? In any event, let's just follow along here because this way we can confirm that this will work the way I want it to. Instead of having possibilities, variables that I don't know what will happen, let's do it this way so that we're sure. Go ahead and remove the browser. Uh, and instead, we will do Cordova Platform Add. Browser at 4.0.0, the at symbol. This is the way we can force to get a specific version of the code. If we don't specify a version, we may get the newest version or we may not. But if we tell it, give me browser version 4, this should force it. So Cordova platform at browser at the little at symbol I got an email 4.0.0. Make sure you mention both of those zeros and press enter. There you go. So now that the get is getting 
When this is done, then we, then we can uh, run Cordova run browser. And then that should allow us to have the browser platform, the ability to test our apps in the browser, which is still not going to be exactly like a device, real or virtual, but it'll let me check the, the console output and the developer tools a lot faster, I think, more efficiently. So let that fully set up and then we'll, we'll run Cordova run browser and we'll see what I mean. No, that's normal. This is this is gonna always go there. Don't worry about that. You do want to uh, close that and um, mm -hmm. oh. so it will still pop up with that. I'm just a little faster than mine, but it will still pop up with that blue thing coming up. Yes, Cordova platform, Cordova platform remove browser, and then just Cordova platform add browser at 4.0. That's right. Yeah, right there. Browser at 4.0.0. So if that worked, I will run Cordo or I will execute Cordova run browser. We're still gonna get this little pop-up from Chrome. Something about storage or something. We're gonna ignore that. We'll just click OK, there's nothing to do about it. And then after that, then the browser should load up. You might still get a few pop-ups at the top. Again, it's not gonna be exactly like a device, but um, it'll help us work with our project a little faster, I think. Okay, for some reason, I didn't get that pop-up, but many of you might see a pop-up. Just go ahead and click OK on that, uh, and then the browser should load up. You might also see other things like this, store files on this device. Uh, you can ignore it, doesn't matter, but I'm going to click OK. And so the device should load up, different screens, my new color scheme, the alert. It's not going to look like the really nice native one because the native one is just the browser pop-up where it says try again, no sound. I don't think I've got sound anyway, let's see what happens here. And then we've got the take photo, which then the browser is saying allow. If you've got a web camera, it might display that. So this is going to behave a little bit weird, but do you see me for a moment behind the app back there? 
<laughs> go to a bat. Huh. <laughs> so there I am. I'm being censored. So um, it kind of works. Yes. Would you be able to take video or just pictures? Um, I think with Cordova we have the option to take video. We just have to look at the other plugin. This one is only to take photos, but I, I think we have the ability for video as well. Okay. So uh, capture. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm trying to click it, but there's a picture on top of it, so I can't hit it. So again, this is just a quick and dirty device. It's not going to fully do what I want. I'm gonna close that. Hopefully that didn't interfere with my recording. But um, the point is, oops, the point is that with the browser 4.00, it looks like we can we can test our project perhaps a little quicker than the device not with all of the features of course but when we get to working with the database it's gonna be perhaps annoying to wait for the device to load up and then load up the console and all of that if we run it directly from the browser like this I think we can uh, check our console output a little faster So something might have popped up here about Acrobat, just say remove this or cancel it, whatever, uh, Chrome default, whatever. But um, project loads up. Clicking on catalog opens up the in-app browser like this, sort of like a mini window in our app. So again, it's a little weird, but we get the idea. We have a, a website here where we can actually click and look at things. That's inside of this mini browser thing, and we can close that, comes back. Go to about, customize. It doesn't look like the uh, local storage quite worked, so that's another little thing. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't worry about this. I've tested it on the real device, on the virtual device. It works. It doesn't for this one for some reason, so I'm not worried about that. Um, one thing that I am worried about, um, that this came up previously, but if we go to About and we go to Map, the map doesn't seem to, to, to work anymore. Um, so I have a fix for that, but this is um, something we'll need to work with. The map doesn't work anymore. I have tested it also on my real device, and uh, when I test it on my real device, it also I try to open that screen and it doesn't uh, and it doesn't behave. So uh, we'll, we're going to fix it in just a moment. But this is beta testing, or this is actually alpha testing it. Beta testing it is when we give it to other people to 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 look at and help us figure out problems. Alpha testing is that we're kind of still doing it ourselves. So um, just to confirm, I'm going to go to about, I'm going to go to map on my real device, and it's just kind of blank, doesn't work. That's because of our content security policy. So um, let's fix that, and then we'll get back to the topic from last time, which is we started to customize the app, and I kind of like my colors, but there's various things I don't like anymore like why is there so much empty space above welcome and below welcome why is this text maybe a little small and hard to read why is this why is that so we'll further customize our project via CSS um, the theme roller let us change colors and such really well but then to, to still fix some of these edges and, and spaces and such we're gonna use the good old element inspector that's why also uh, I wanted to get browser running and I wanted to get browser running so that we can so it can help us to to define our CSS because right here I see a lot of empty space so we're gonna fix that we'll get back to that so what I want to fix is the map 
Let's go ahead then and open the map file. Yes? My uh, clock seems to just die. I mean, I've got a 404. You mean like mine right here? 404 logo ping? Yes. Just press Control C okay. to cancel that. If it doesn't want to respond, if your prompt doesn't respond anymore, Control C to terminate it, and then click type yes, and you should get it back. Okay. Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay, so let's get into our project folder, WW folder, and let's open the dir HTML file. We need to edit some of that code. The DIR file. So uh, let me pull up my my browser one more time. Um, if I were to look at the console output, this is one of the reasons why I want to do Cordova run browser. I want to see is the console telling me anything to help me with my app so if I uh, if I go to about and map yep a bunch of stuff popped up right here I'm sorry, how do you don't worry it? don't worry about it just let me just finish my thought here so it says refuse to load script refuse to load script and then uncut references and so forth so what this is telling me is that the um, the script, googleapi.com, blah, 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 jQuery, and down here, google.com slash uh, js, that JavaScript code is not loading up um, in my project because it says, refuse to load this script because it violates the following content security policy directive default SRC self data etc etc note that script RC was not explicitly set so default SRC is used as a callback so this comes back to this line of code that we have in the HT in the index HTML file and the DIR file that defines the content security policy what can we and can we not use what kind of code can we or can we not use in our project so when we look here in the HTML file, line 14, meta HTTP equivalent content security policy, content, etc., etc. So what this is saying, this content, this is what's letting us do things. One of the first things that we did when we created the project and we transferred last month's work into this month, remember we copied several lines of code from the template index file into our project from last month. And this was one of them. And we needed to make an, an, a change here so that our um, JavaScript would work. That's what this whole green part says, uh, specifically line 12. Enable inline JS, uh, JS, add unsafe inline to default source. So in content, we've got default source, etc., 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 semicolon. Then we've got style source, etc., etc., semicolon. And then media source. So we're defining style source, CSS. We're saying we can use the CSS within this project and, as, and also inline CSS. Over here, default stuff we're saying what can we use what can we not and then media source here we're saying we can use basically any picture um, that uh, asterisk means uh, that's a wild card so it means anything so we don't have anything here that says let us use javascript on some other website 
because that could be a big security vulnerability. Um, this other website might have this infected JavaScript that is then capturing people's passwords, let's say. So there's nothing here that lets us use JavaScript on another server. We've got JavaScript in our project, line 19, we're saying let's use jQuery Mobile CSS, let's use jQuery Mobile JS within our project. But line 21 and 23 say let's use uh, jQuery and Google JavaScript code on their servers. And even though we might fully trust Google, the content security policy is very strict. Unless we said, let's explicitly trust Google, we will not be able to use their code. That's what this error message is telling us here in the browser. We can't load this Google code because it violates the content security policy. There was no script source that allowed it. So over at contentsecuritypolicy.com, we saw this briefly previously, this would explain to us exactly everything that we do, everything that we can do with that security policy. Script source defines valid sources of JavaScript. So we need to write script source and say let's use the code up at Google server. So what we need to do on line 14, let's go all the way to the end of the line. You'll see a semicolon here, that was default source. You'll see style source, semicolon, and then media source. Let's add a semicolon after the asterisk, because we need to add more, semicolon, space, script dash src space. Now we're about to define what kind of JavaScript can we use. Let's write um, in single quotes self space single quotes unsafe inline space. Here we're saying, let's use any JavaScript code within our own project and any JavaScript code that's inline in our project. And we'll say two more things at the end here. I mean, I have a question regarding the yes. uh, unsafe thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, in terms of, uh, I mean, is it, you know, we talk about a security thing, right? I mean, the, the, the next thing is that you would keep, like, getting the script from the other side instead of no code, it would take more. It could take longer because we have to, the device has to connect to that server, so it's going to take some time. And ideally, we would want all of our JavaScript libraries and such within the project. Unfortunately, we cannot do that with this Google one. We can do it with, with jQuery 172. We can download it and put it as part of our project, but we will still have to refer to the online version of the Google JavaScript library. There's no way to download that one. But I mean, like for the like only one, and you just like download, and what, what we did, like pieces. Yeah, like, that one could work. Yes. Yeah, line twenty-three. We would not be able to download it. So we're going to end here. Then, um, still inside the double quote. So be careful. There's a double quote. This ends the whole content equals double quote, and then each of these is inside a script. So then we type here the web address of what we're trying to access. The easiest way would be to copy and paste. Line 21, we're going to copy https colon slash slash ajax.googleapis.com um, without the slash, just that part, not the whole thing, just the server. So jump down, let's just copy and paste, jump down to line 21 and copy, like I'm saying, from HTTP to the dot com. I don't think we need the slash. Did we need the slash? Okay. So let's copy that part. And we will paste it 
we're at the very end here and it's not in quotes, is it? That's not in quotes. So just paste it, no quotes. You, you do have the double quote, of course, because that's the end of the content. Now we're saying, let's use code that's in our own project, inline, and from that particular Google server. After the dot com space, and we'll do the same thing for the other line, uh, 21, I think, uh, 23. We'll need the HTTP maps.google.com. Copy that part and paste it at the end of the content security policy right here so now we've allowed this external JavaScript that should be the fix for our prob problem that when we go to the map now we've allowed the app to connect to an online resource and instead of me having this weird blank empty screen it should hopefully then run the map properly. Let's save our work go ahead and run it, see if it works. Question. Where is that second line you said 23? Yes, you should see something that says 21 which is ajax.googleapis and 23 should be maps.google.com uh, We're just going to uh, copy uh, it's Exactly. The content security policy only needs to know the name of the server, not the specific file. So that means we have HTTP down to the dot com. That's it. Okay. Next. What do we do on the maps line? You copy that, and then you paste it at the end of content security policy, line 14. You see, I've got unsafe inline, ajax.google API, and then maps.com. So just check your code. It's a long line of code, but here's where it's at. I'm going to save it and run it, and uh, hopefully the map should work again. Do we have to do this in the index file or just in the uh, Just in the DIR because we never reference this Google Maps stuff in the index file, just in the DIR file. Let's see. So, if you get this weird empty screen for a moment, that's just the, the, um, the splash screen. I wouldn't worry about it. But now I'm going to go to About, I'm going to click Map that. Wait for that splash screen. Again, it might look a little weird. There we go. So now it's got the colors. Um, on the, on the this line. may still take a moment to load up, but that's okay if it doesn't, but it's on its, it's, on its way. On, yes. on your line of code, is there just a space between the two website addresses? Yes. Okay, the is there a space after the last one? No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where would it continue those lines? So you don't have to scroll all the way over. Word wrap? Um, not in HTML, and that particularly really long line, I wouldn't be comfortable breaking it anyway because it, it, it's got the open quote and the end quote yeah. that might cause issues. That's why I'm also going to test it on my real and my virtual device. Mm -hmm. So this is why we want to test and test and test because so many possibilities. And as I said previously, you can't design anything foolproof because there's so many ingenious fools. <laughs> I'm going to run it on my Android device to fully confirm that it works.
you see that content security policy is uh, pretty pretty harsh in that it can really make your app behave weird but it's supposed to be for your own good for our own good to protect us from possible vulnerabilities because JavaScript can have these vulnerabilities that your your own code might be correct but imagine that that somehow let's say you've got some JavaScript on a server your own server someone hacks into your server and you never realize it and then they're spending time browsing all of your folders and such and they see some folder that you called important and in that folder you've got all these important JavaScript libraries and they read your code and they say this is dealing with payment processing so you never knew but then on your server your your payment processing JavaScript code is compromised and um, that's a cross uh, that's an XSS attack a cross cross-site scripting attack uh, because your app was connecting to another site it's cross-site and with the content security policy then um, that helps prevent that okay someone broke into that account and they read your JavaScript and they rewrite the JavaScript to now have them point um, your app uh, over to to their server well, the content security policy would not allow that because the content, the CSP, only is letting Google, the Google server at this point, not some other weird server. Okay, let's see, it's loading up. Splash screen, about, map.
Okay, so further, uh, further reading my console output, it's telling me I need to add a couple more content security policy items. Uh, my console is saying refuse to load image, blah, 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 image because it violates the policy. There is no image SRC. So we'll do something very similar. We'll add image SRC and then say let us load images from csi.gstatic.com, apparently. The second one also is the same sort of thing, refuse to load image. And then we've got uncaught eval error, refuse to evaluate JavaScript because unsafe eval is not in the script. So, okay, I guess we'll add that. So hopefully that'll fix that my map doesn't fully load up. So again, this is the content security policy. This is uh, pretty strict. One way to have none of these problems at all is on line 14, just remove it completely. Then it can do anything at all. But that could be a big security vulnerability. And this wasn't implemented until the latest versions of Cordova. When I was teaching this class just last semester, it didn't have this yet in Cordova. So now um, this is part of the whole spec of the latest Cordova. And um, it's a bit of a pain to get it to work completely, but it's supposed to be more secure. Let's go back to line 14. And we've got this section, script source, self, unsafe inline, and then these, these um, servers. The console seems to be also be telling us, you're missing unsafe-eval. So I don't believe it matters where we put it, but I'm going to add it. We've got script source, self, unsafe inline, space, quotes, unsafe, eval. E-V-A-L. So that's the long line. What's that? Unsafe eval is already in the static of this line. Oh, is it? But it's still complaining. Uh, yeah, it is there. Um, it, I guess it's still, because this is attached to the default SRC. I guess it's not explicit enough. It wants it, according to the output, it wants it in the script source. So unsafe eval to, uh, attached to script. these images that don't want to load up it's because it says we don't have image src right we have uh, style media and i guess image is different so at the end we've got unsafe eval google apis maps on google semicolon still inside of the quotes space IMG SRC space. We're about to say now, okay, let us load images from that domain. And uh, what's that? Is it? Well, that's specifically the subdomain ssl.gstatic. And then the console is giving us csi.gstatic. So, so we want now at the very end http colon slash slash csi dot gstatic dot com and then I think that's all we need because we gave it the unsafe eval that it was complaining about and it said you don't have any image src policy for gstatic even though we have gstatic over on the default but that's ssl dot gstatic uh, the documentation seems 
to say that we can do wild cards, but when I tried it previously, it didn't seem to work. So we'll just explicitly tell it, let us access this subdomain on this domain that it's specifically complaining about. Is there spacing in No, no spaces in, no spaces there. Alright, let's check that out. Let's um, save it and run it. Run it in the browser preferably just to maybe get some faster output. That's close. Hmm. So this is popping up saying maps.gstatic. We have csi.gstatic. Let me try something. Let me try to put that wild card in so that it'll work on subdomains, hopefully. The documentation seems to say that the wild cards work. Oh, does it? I wouldn't doubt that it's HTTPS, but let me confirm. No, it, it does say it here, HTTP maps. Coming on the last thing, on line, when you put that CSI. 
Yeah, and I'm comparing it right here that it says, um, you know, maps and versus CSI because it asks for maps at one place and CSI for another. So. Um, Possibly. Yes, but that one's for SSL, so let's try this. HTTPS, colon slash slash, wildcard, gstatic. So we'll say um, the, say, uh, the secure and the not secure. Again, let me just test this out before we all do it, and then get sad. Let me get sad, and then we'll see if it works. And this is the thing that, uh, as I said, this stuff is uh, this stuff changes throughout uh, throughout the versions. When I taught this last time, we didn't even have to deal with this because there was no content security policy. And I know that if we just remove that line, it will all work. But maybe we want to be secure, so we'll have to troubleshoot it a little bit. We're troubleshooting it live because I haven't done this. But logically, look at what I'm doing. I'm looking at the console output. Um, then I'm trying out a couple different things that might be logical. And let's see what happens. So obviously I always make it look so easy, but then when you're on your own and you're trying and it's not so easy, you'd have to try things out like I am.
Okay, I'm going to need to research this on my own uh, later, so what we're going to do for the moment is deactivate that line just so that it works. Um, I would rather not, but for the moment what we'll do is this. Whatever your line 14 is, we'll, we'll fix it later. What we'll do is we'll create a new line 15 and then drag that ending of your comment, line 13, drag it down to 15 so that now the content security policy is also commented out. Okay, just drag the ending comment. It ended up here with these notes. Drag that ending comment, line 14, uh, line 13, down to 15 to comment it out. This is going to need to be then a very specific content policy because it's trying to load not only external JavaScript but also external CSS and external images and so it's getting a little tricky. I'm going to have to look at it later to see if we can develop a better line 14 but for the moment we'll deactivate it. Because it kind of works, but it just doesn't display images. See, it does show the directions, but no images, which is weird. Anyway, I'm going to test it now. I'm commenting out the security policy in the DIR file. And then it works. So we're close, but obviously it's taking a little while to beta test it. Uh, so if any of you can kind of maybe figure it out also and let me know, we can share it with the class. But for the moment, I'm just commenting it out. Question? I, I did a Google of the first error that showed up. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was referring to something in the first line of the discussion about browser policy.content.allowsoriginal.all. Okay. Maybe. What? So, what did you search for specifically here? Um, my search was on um, refuse to load the image. Single quote HTTP slash slash CSI gstatic dot com slash CSI dot com. It was just the first uh, thing I found in the console. Is it any of these answers here? Um, yeah, it was the second one down. Console error and maps are not loading. Issue 33. Okay. And then I kind of went down to ways. And that's what I saw Ben talking about. Hmm. About this browser policy content. Um, mm -hmm. Has it bought in the CI now? Mm. That um, that might be an answer to look at, but I'm just um, yeah, it might it, it might go it might it might go in a direction to help definitely because this 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 stuff is pretty new because of the latest version of Cordova. So um, perhaps some of the documentation hasn't caught up yet. Yeah, so something in the, in the form of browser policy content. Oh, wow. yeah, I don't know. That's a good point because I didn't test it on my device. I assumed oh, it didn't work in the browser, so I said let's remove it. I didn't test it. I should have done some more testing. It didn't work in mine. Oh, okay. But uh, at this point, after removing the content security policy, then. We get some normal feedback, and then there it is. There's the map. Uh -huh. A map is made out of pictures. It's refusing to load the pictures for some reason. And um, it worked. I'm going to double check it on my real device. Yep, 
Yes. Just in directory because I didn't really see any adverse effects to having it in the in the index. The index seems to work how I want, just as DIR one is not. So I'm going to leave the index with the content security policy, but comment it out on the directions. Alright, let's see on my real device. About map. Yep, there's a map. So, short answer to fix all of this remove the policy. Long answer pending because I need to fully see exactly how to edit that content security policy to make it permissive enough to load the resources that we need. So, that's the best we can do for the moment. It's not the best solution because this is what's happening. It's just not loading pictures. It is showing a map and directions and such, but if we can't see where, where, we're, where we're going, what's the point? So something is happening still with that security policy that it's not letting... It says refuse to load image, Google APIs. because I need Google APIs there. So, uh, yep, that's, uh, that's the life of a programmer. Something works, something doesn't work. You have to figure out what your tactic will be for the moment. We're going to comment it out, which is not the best way, because um, we could have vulnerabilities. That's the whole point of, that, of having that CSP. But for the moment, that's, uh, that's what we'll do here. So. Um, yes. So before we used to be able to uh, enter any, any address or anything, we have to use Google Mapify. Actually, uh, we actually we did we we didn't want that. We want the ability that it'll always take you to a specific place. Because if this is the app for this college, I always want people to know how to come here. If I wanted them to enter their own address, we just have to fix line. 124. 124 in the DIR file is where we tell it this is where you should end up. But if instead you change style display none to style display block, then it will show the box for someone to add an address. But it really it doesn't make sense to do that because even if I have my app for my bakery, I want people to come to my bakery, not to choose an address. Yeah. They can go to Google Maps for that. I want them to come to my address. But I mean, like, for the actions, like, for example, from my house to, uh, to the school here. Yeah. That should automatically work. You don't need to put in your own starting address because the GPS will get the starting address. Uh, I mean, yes, I, I understand that, uh, that concept, but, but also, for example, like, you know, you at somebody else's uh, you know, computer. For example, you have a library, how do you get there? That could be from maybe a block away because they have maybe have to take the bus there. Or Huh, I'm not sure I get what, get what you mean because it is supposed to show always the directions from wherever the person is at. But are you saying like you're at the library and you want to get directions from some other place to the ending place? To the, to the school. Well, for example, like I'm at the library and then. The bus station is like a block, of, uh, I mean, uh, a block away. Uh -huh. And then how to get there. I mean, but, but I mean, like, if it's a block away, then I should know how to get there because it's so close. But I'm just, uh, like, for example. 
well, there might be functionality that would make sense with, with your kind of app, and we'd have to explore how to set that up. But this one is just kind of like one way. It assumes from wherever you're at, come here. If you want to add extra points in between the path, that'll require more, more setup in the JavaScript code. And Google has that feature that you can add to it several, you know, several points along a path to, to get you to your ending point. So if this worked, um, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll work then on uh, customizing the app a little bit more regarding, uh, regarding CSS and such. So it's uh, 7.20, we'll be back at 7.30, and we'll do that. We'll, we'll work with some CSS.